everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Hello everybody, hello. I am so glad to see you here on today. We are going to continue to talk about the account of Abram and what was going on in his life and we are going to learn about believe and faith and that's because abraham was the father of faith yes and so we're going to talk about believe and faith in our lessons all right well for those of you who don't know me my name is miss karen fletcher how do you do my name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? Hey, Miss Frederica and your group. How do you do? Danita, Charlotte, and Rosemary. How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do, Miss Dawn, Miss Marilyn, Miss Madison, Dana, Jason? Hey, how are you? I am so glad you're here today. We're talking about the accounts of Abram. Yes, these are not just Bible fairy tales. These happen in the lives of the people that we discuss in our lessons. So we're talking about Abram. Yes, this is what happened in his life. And uh, we're kind of sticking with believe and faith, um, even though we're talking about Abram. And I want you all to know, believe. Believe is to have an expected end. I believe I'm going to get a good grade. I believe I'm going to the store. I believe that's your expected end to get the good grade, to go to the store. Come to think of it, I believe this chair will, this chair, you're fine. I believe this chair will hold me. I believe that. Now, because I believe it, faith will cause me to go and sit Attempt to sit down, sit down, sit down, and sit down. So believe has a corresponding action, which is faith. And faith is when you when you walk towards what you believe. So I sat in this chair, and you know, maybe, maybe it'll seem a little rocky or something. The chair isn't good. Maybe a boat is better. You get in the boat, and then the boat is the boat starts rocking, but you believe that the boat is going to get you to the other side. And so you stay in the boat and it starts reeling and rocking. And maybe you can tell the person to go back. But no, you don't tell the person to go back. So you're trusting in them. You're relying on him to get you to the other side. And oh, it really gets bad. It really gets bad. And the water comes in and, and you're trusting it. And you don't tell them to, to go back. You keep forward. Adhere to, to stick with. So faith. Believe is the expected end. If you don't get anything else today, because we're going to keep talking about faith. So, believe is the expected end. To have a hope. To believe you're going to get something. To believe you're going to get something. And so, God told Abram in chapter 12 that he was going to, to bless him. 
Let me go there. He told them that he was going to give him land. He told them he was going to give him descendants. And he said that those who curse you, I will curse. And those who bless you, I will bless. And he told him, leave your father's stuff and go where I and go where I send you. And so Abraham left his father's stuff. He took his family and what they had. Well, Lot came with them. That's another story. And he followed God's lead to Canaan. That's where God was leading him. Okay, so today's lesson. Today's lesson, we'll talk a little bit about Lot and we'll talk a little bit about Abram. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the day. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you that as we study your word, that it will become part of our heart. We may hear it as rote. We may hear it and learn it in our mind. But as we study your word, as we chew on your word, it will become part of our heart, Lord. And it will keep us centered on you. It will keep us focused. Bless us to read it even more in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so today, yesterday we read Genesis 12. And today we're going to read Genesis 13. I don't know why I really grabbed for the Bible. Because we're going to go to the NLT version of the Bible. And we're going to Genesis 13. NLT. And we've got some strange names that are coming up. So get ready. So Abram left Egypt, traveled north into the Negev, along with his wife and Lot and all they owned. Remember when he was uh, in Egypt and the, and the Pharaoh had taken Sarai as uh, maybe he was going to make her one of his wives and anyway he had a horrible uh, he was plagued just plagued and so he, he was like Abram what did you do this is your wife what do you so and he had given Abram all his stuff he let Abram keep that stuff and told Abram and Sarai to get out of there so anyway they Abram had his stuff then he had some more stuff added to it from the king of Egypt. So now Abram left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev along with his wife and Lot and all they owned. Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. From the Negev, they continued traveling by stages toward Bethel and they pitched their tents between Bethel and Ai where they had camped before. They had been here before if you remember we talked about that. In the last chapter. Um, this was the same place where Abram built an altar. And there he worshipped the Lord again. And I think it was the, the letters YW. And I did not write that in my notes. But it's like saying Yahweh. So anyway. Um, they... They pitched their tents there. Lot, uh, Abram and his family, Lot and his family. Lot who was traveling with Abram ha had also become very wealthy. Sometimes when you hang around folk, you get what they get. So you better watch who you hang around. So he became very wealthy with flock and sheep and goats, herds of cattle, many tents. But the land could not support Abram's wealth and Lot's wealth. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. Abram and Lot. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites also lived in the land. So you have Abram with his crew, Lot with his crew, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Finally, Abram said to Lot, let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are very close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and we will separate. If you want to go to the left, then we'll go to the right. If you prefer to go to the right, then we'll go to the left. Let me tell you this. Everything that looks good is not always good. Remember that? Remember when Samuel, Samuel went to uh, anoint the kings and he... Eliab came out and Samuel said, surely this is the one because he was tall and dark and just, and God said, nope, he's not the one. 
He is not the one. You're looking at the outside, but I'm looking at the heart. Well, anyway, Lot, he took a long look at the fertile plain of Georgia. Of, I'm sorry, of the fertile plain of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Zoar. And the, the whole area was well watered. Everywhere he looked, it was just greenery. The garden looked like the garden of the Lord or a beautiful garden that had been in Egypt. Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. Now Sodom and Gomorrah was there, but this was before God destroyed them. So he, he chose this Jordan Valley to the east of them. He went there with his flock and his servants and parted companies, company with his uncle Abram. So Abram settled in the land of Canaan, and Lot moved his tent to the place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of the area were extremely wicked and constantly sinned against God. That's where Lot lived. He moved there. People were extremely wicked. After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. He said, I'm giving you all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants. What are descendants? What are descendants? You may not have remembered me saying that yesterday, so I'll say it again. Descendants are the people that come after you. Your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and after and after the generations after are your descendants. In your bloodline. Those are your descendants. Your ancestors are your parents, your great, your grandparents, your great grandparents, and all that came before you in your bloodline. Those are ancestors came before, descendants come after. Okay? You got that? So God has promised this to Abraham and all his descendants as a permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. There he built another altar to the Lord. Yes. Now, a war broke out. Yes, a war broke out. You got King Amraph, Amraphel of Babylon, the king, uh, Arioch of Elisar, King Keldalamor of Elam, the king, title of Goam, and they fought against King Bera of Sodom, King Bersha of Gomorrah, King Shinab of Adma, King Shemeba of Zeboam. And so you got five, you got five kings. Fighting four kings. Now the second group of kings joined forces with the Siddim Valley. And uh, that's a valley of the Dead Sea. For 12 years they had been subject to King Keldalamora. But in the 13th year they rebelled against him. So one year later this king and his allies they arrived and they defeated the Rephites. And they defeated this group. And then the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, they decided that they would go to battle with them. Anyway, guess where Lot lived? Lot lived right by Sodom. And so when the fight came on, that group of kings lost. And so they took everything. They took everything, including Lot, his people, and his stuff. But one of Lot's servants got away, and he went and he told Abraham. He said, uh, that there was a war, they captured your, your nephew, and so when Abraham heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he mobilized 318 trained men who had been born in his house. Now, I didn't even know he had men that could fight. But he said, train men, 318 men. But remember, remember the promise God said. With those that curse you, I'm going to curse. Those that bless you, 
I'm going to bless. So anyway, he got these 318 men and he pursued this army. He caught up with them in Dan. Now, he also had some more guys. There was a people from Mamre and his relatives, Eshkol and Aner. Eshkol and Aner. So it was three other companies, three other cities that helped him fight. So they went, they divided the men, and they attacked during the night. And Abram chased them. And Abram and his group, 318 men, plus those three other groups of guys, they won. Abram recovered all the goods that had been taken. He brought back his nephew Lot with his possession and all the women and all the captives. 318 men. I don't know. It was a small group that went to fight all of these kings. Anyway, after they returned, the king of Sodom went out to meet him and he says, um, well, he went to meet him and then there was a king, Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest, the God of the Most High. There had never been a king and a priest. So here we have a king and a priest. And he brought some wine to Abraham. And Melchizedek blessed Abram with, the, with this blessing. He said, blessed be Abram by God, the Most High, the Creator of the earth. He, and blessed be the God Most High who has defeated your enemy. He knew that Abram did not defeat those enemies by himself. He knew that God had to help Abram defeat the enemies. And then Abram gave him a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. We call that a tithe, but that's for another lesson. And so Sodom said to Abram, you know, get, just give me back my people, the people that you, uh, that they had captured, but you can keep all the stuff that you got when you captured them. And Abram replied to the king of Sodom, he said, I solemnly swear to the Lord God, the God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take as much as a single thread or a single sandal thong from what belongs to you. Otherwise, you might say, I'm the one who made Abram rich. I will only accept what my warriors have eaten, and I request that you give a fair share to those, those good allies of mine, Aner, Eshkel, and Mamre. So the guy, so the king gave something to them, but he didn't give anything to Abram. But anyway, I just want you to know that when God is on your side, you win. It's important that that you go to God for everything. Now, when they chose, I don't think Lot prayed to God and said, God, where should I go? He was just looking, 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 and it looked good. But everything that looks good is not always good for you. So the land that he, the place that he chose to, to live, it was not good. Remember, they said they were doing extreme evil. Extreme evil. And we haven't even touched the extreme evil yet. But that was that is what was going on. And Lot lived there. Then he was captured, but his uncle... And the power of God went and saved him, rescued him and all that they had captured. He got his stuff back. And then Abram, he goes back to, uh, he, no, he meets, he meets the uh, king of Salem, Melchizedek, who blessed him. And then he gave, and then Abraham gave him a tenth. Abraham honored him. So I just want you to follow the accounts we're following the days or the life of Abram from the time God told him to leave his father's area. Leave, leave your dad's stuff. So he left his dad's stuff. He's walking. God has placed him in Canaan. They walk a little farther and, and Lot decides he wants this land over here. God tells Abram a little more of the plan for his life. So just, you know, we've got to trust God in our journey because he has a wonderful plan for us, right? He knows the plan that he has for our lives. And so our memory verse, we're going to go back to our memory verse, which is found in Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, 
Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. All right. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We'll do that again. And I'll see I'm doing a King James Version. I've got to do this version. So here we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. All right, that is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What's our Bible song for today? I'm looking for a Bible song. What's our Bible song for today? Yes, our Bible song. I'm looking for a Bible song. I'll, I'll let you pick the Bible song for today. And, hello, Mr. Kevin. What's our Bible song? I'm looking to see. You can pick whatever Bible song that you know we know. We've got a Bible song and a fun song. Come to think of it, Be Bold. Okay, so we'll do Be Bold. And what's our fun song? While we're getting ready for this, what's our fun song? Yes, when you're walking in the power of God, you can be bold. I just think Abraham just got those men and they went and captured. They went and got a lot in his group. Okay, so we're going to sing Be Bold. Are you already here? We go. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. You've got to walk in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory. For the Lord our God is with thee. Come on and run to the camp. Tell all the people, get ready, get ready. Come on and run to the camp. Tell all the people, get ready, get ready. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. You've got to walk in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory. For the Lord our God is with thee. Everybody be bold, be bold, be strong, be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold, be bold, be strong, be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. You got to walk in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory. For the Lord our God is with thee. Yes, we've got to be bold. We've got to be strong and walk in the power of God. That's why, you know, if you believe that God is God, believe. We believe God is God. He is our expected end. Yes, I believe what God says is true. That is my expected end. And so, because I believe that, I am going to trust what God says. I'm going to rely on what God says and I am going to stick with what God says no matter what. No matter what. Ooh, some days it gets rough, but we got to stick with it. All right, so our fun song, I saw it. It was Head and Shoulders. Miss Charlotte, you just did that because I did good yesterday. So you want to see if I'm going to do good today. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. I just don't know 
why I, I go through this. But here we go. We're going to do head and shoulders. You guys ready? Here we go. Head, shoulder, knees, and toes. Head, shoulder, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulder, knees, and toes. Shoulder, knees, and toes. Shoulder, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Knees and toes. Knees and toes. Knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Knees and toes. Toes. Woo! Toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Toes. I kind of get this one. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulder, knees and toes, knees and toes. Two times in a row. Well, I kind of, I kind of did a little, little, but I didn't point to the wrong thing. I just didn't say, just didn't say the part I was supposed to say. But all right. Oh my gosh. Well, we are just talking about the life of Abraham and I just want you all to make sure you continue to talk with God and pray to God and listen for God and obey God okay in your life wherever you are in life just listen to the voice of God and obey dear Heavenly Father I thank you for this day I thank you for your word I thank you that your word is life God it gives life to us and I pray Father God in Jesus name that we will allow your word to uh, just bless us, to, to go through our hearts and, and to change us to be what you would have us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to Charlotte, sing your song. That's right. You all share Jesus with everybody and have a wonderful rest of your day.